Hi everyone, today we're going to do this super fun two-page layout. I hope you can join me. grab about six photos and you'll need seven sheets of paper with five different patterns or colors so get some supplies get ready and you'll also need either a Cricut or die cut letters or alpha stickers for the title and you'll need a 12 inch trimmer personal trimmer and some sort of adhesive Then you'll need some decorative stickers and or embellishments, and then a typewriter or computer with a printer for the journal boxes. Grab everything and pause the video and join me. Let's get started. Okay, so here's my idea from Scrapbook and Cards today. It's this page here. And I drew it out. So I have four pages I'm doing with this event, but this is the bottom one is the one I'm working on right now. And I have a bunch of paper from Gather Together from Creative Memories that I'm looking through to see what I would like to use. There's also a harvest one i think it's called hello autumn so i'm looking through that these are similar colors these two collections so i put them together in my power project folder and then i'm looking for stickers that might coordinate this one's gather together stickers and then in the back there is hello autumn And I love this blue. Isn't it so pretty? It's such a beautiful, beautiful paper. And I think it's from Gather Together, but it could be Hello Autumn, but I'm pretty sure it's Gather Together, which I don't think they have anymore, but what a gorgeous collection. The, the other side of the blue is this green with the lines, sort of like a grid. And for some reason, it reminded me of the croquet um, little lawn things, the little arcs or arches. Um, it just made me think of croquet immediately. And then this white paper is so pretty, has these little yellow sort of puffy like dandelion like flowers. And then that plaid on the other side of this one looks really good. This one's pretty, but it doesn't seem to go. This plaid with green and dark green, like a light green, dark green, kind of mossy, so perfect for um, a croquet page, in my opinion. And then there's this sort of a light lattice looking paper here. And I'm just trying to decide which papers to use with the photos. I want it to look good with the photos and complement them and not take away from the photos. This one's so pretty too. That's definitely Hello Autumn. And I just want to um, coordinate and highlight the photos. This yellow is really nice. I can't remember which. It's either Hello Autumn or Gather Together. So I got this little post-it notes so I can assign where the paper is going to be. Is it going to be the background? Is it going to be the border? Is it going to be, you know, top, bottom, whatever. So I'm just sort of doing that so I don't forget because there's a lot of different um, pages, um, different papers in that layout that I got the idea from for scrapbook and cards today. So I'm just sort of writing myself notes. But I like that green. That green with the lines is like um, so croquet to me. And the problem is, is it's the other side of that gorgeous blue. So, and since it's a two page layout, I have to choose if I'm going to use 
um, you know, a whole 12 by 12 sheet. That means I can't use the other side. I need it on both sides. I need, you know, you'll see. Anyway, and I thought that this looked really good, the plaid against that sort of um, green line gridded paper. But I'm like, no, I really want to use this blue. It's so pretty. And then, it, you know, once I use it, it's gone forever because they don't make this collection anymore. It is one of my favorite collections. This gather together, so pretty. Boy, it sure is a process of figuring out what I want to use but we'll get there. And you can scrapbook right along with me. Grab all your, you know, the collection that you think will work or a few collections that go along with your photos and start perusing the papers, start perusing the stickers and the embellishments and deciding what you like. And you can just scrapbook right along with me here. I'm using my scrap and easel so that my upper back and my neck don't get a pain from hunching over, over my work. And a lot of these really are so pretty that it makes it hard to choose. The narrowing down process is probably the longest process for me. Once I figure out what I want to use, everything sort of speeds up after that. This is a really nice plaid and I think it seems like croquet a bit, but I didn't feel like it went with anything else that I have already chosen, which I definitely want to use this white one with the little yellow puffy dandelions and I want to use that green and dark green plaid and I'm pretty sure I want to use the, the gridded paper in the back there on the right with the green. So here we go. We are seeing that that plaid does not work with the blue and the blue just doesn't really work with the page and the, the photos and the idea, but it is such a beautiful, beautiful paper that we have to say goodbye to, sadly. But this green, I would have never thought I would use it, but when I put it with the photos and the other papers, it makes so much sense. It looks like something for lawn games. It looks like something that goes on a lawn. It looks like croquet. It looks like grass. It looks like what we're doing here and it just makes sense. And this is just sort of my process. I take my photos, I take my collections, and I narrow things down. I play around with it, I move it around, I um, you know, put layer them on top of each other to help me decide. Sort of like how I get dressed. Does this top go with these pants? No, does this one? Oh, this one, you know, it's the same thing. I'm really bad with vision, like being a visionary. I have to see it in front of me physically, tangibly, to actually make decisions.
So I have finally decided to go ahead and go with the green grid paper and I'm putting it on the scrap and easel really straight so that everything else that goes onto the page is going to be straight. Um, I don't like it when things are crooked unless it's crooked on purpose. And I have cut down the plaid paper about almost an inch, I think about an inch on every side. And at first I was going to center it in the middle of the 12 by 12 paper. Just measuring this white sheet to see where I'd like to cut it. And same with this one down here. Just sort of getting an idea of what it's gonna look like. And I'm measuring, this little ruler comes with the scrap and easel. And I'm measuring um, where I'm gonna be cutting these papers. And this blue is sort of a periwinkle, sort of a faded light kind of bluish. So I was going to put these, you know, center inside and then inside. And then I looked at my idea page or my in, uh, the inspiration from scrapbook and cards today. And I realized that the center is touching um, on these papers, on the, the layout that they did. So I realized Oh, <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do too. I really like it. I just forgot, but here we go. We're going to copy their idea and then make it our own. I'm using the scallop blade for my 12 inch trimmer to cut this little edge that you see on the yellow paper. And nothing is adhered yet. I haven't glued anything down. I like to work like this where I see everything put together, almost everything before I start sticking it down or using my tape runner.
So now I'm putting some stickers that I might use onto wax paper. It helps me to go ahead and put it on the page without um, actually sticking it to the page. I got these little wax paper sandwich bags, I think they are. They look like little bags, but they don't seal and they're just wax paper. I got them from Amazon. I'll put the link below. They're really, really helpful. You can save your sticker sheets and use those. Sometimes they're a little too um, opaque. I'd like them to be more translucent, translucent so that I can see behind the sticker a little bit. So it's almost like the wax paper isn't there. So now I'm just cutting out those stickers, um, but just cutting the wax paper, as you'll see. What's great about this is that you can put them back on your sticker sheet if you don't use them and they are still extremely sticky. I saw this idea somewhere and I tried it and I love it. It is the best idea for planning your page without losing stickers or getting, you know, getting a page you don't like. You can really see it ahead of time and the wax paper is so helpful. And a little bit goes a long way. I got these little croquet stickers from Creative Memories, oh my goodness, probably 2005 or something. They are pretty old. I have a little collection of a few of the old stickers. And I didn't know if I was ever going to use the croquet stickers, but um, when we got a croquet set, I thought, well, maybe I'll end up using these stickers. And here we are. I'm just putting them on the wax paper so that I can see how they'll look on the page or where I want to put them on the page. It's super helpful. Little croquet balls. And here I'm just putting my stickers on the wax paper onto the page just to get an idea of what I think I might do, how I want to place them, where I want to place them. This is a little embellishment from the Gather Together collection. And so it's just a, like a layered thing of paper. There's no sticky on the back yet.
Now I'm deciding which photos will go where. I know that there are a couple of photos that will go down the middle that I will cut in half and put on either side of each page. So I picked two photos that have uh, a, you know, sort of a split somewhere where I'm not cutting a person. Just sort of had a gap, a big enough gap to use. I wasn't sure if I was going to use all seven photos that I had. Lots of them are pretty similar, so if you have photos that are basically the same, some of them can be weeded out. Definitely keep the ones that capture the memory and capture the moment the best and everybody's faces the best. The one in the middle on the bottom is the back of someone, but on the left you can see my daughter leaning on her croquet uh, mallet, and I just thought that was so cute. <laughs> Plus it's a great photo to have a gap down the middle. Now I'm using Cricut Design Space to come up with the title. So I wrote Karoke, and then I'm going to choose between fonts of which I like the best. And I'm using system, no, actually I'm using Cricut fonts. Um, so I'm using Cricut fonts to choose which one I like for the title. And I like this one, so I decide that I'm going to choose between two by placing two in front of me at the same time. And it, what this was the clear winner. I go ahead and cut that out. You can use letter stickers or alpha stickers. You can use um, you know, a die cut machine that has alpha dies. Um, or you can write out your title with just making block letters, first with a pencil and then with a, a good uh, scrapbooking pen. So I'm going to cut it out on this blue that I chose that is that bottom paper that we have across the two pages. Um, it's that light kind of indigo, almost denim blue. Let me cut that out and we will weed it out of the mat. And Cricut has, you know, the little tools that scrape and lift and poke and get, you know, get things. But a lot of times I find that my Creative Memories multi-purpose tool works best for lifting and then also sort of holding the letter for me if I need it to. I know that that sounds funny. It's like between my thumb and the tool, I'll hold it sometimes. Um, and you'll see that lots of times I place it with the multi-purpose tool onto the wherever I'm putting the letters. And for now, I'm just setting them to the side off of the mat. They won't go on to the photo in the end. The multi-purpose tool has the really, really thin end to get right underneath the paper. And it's flexible and it's just really easy for me to use.
And then I'm going to decide how I want to put the title. And I'm not sure if I like it on this green. That's a lot of green going on. Plus the blue and the green are too close in color to each other, I believe. So I gotta go back to my paper and decide what will the title look good on. That first paper on the top there with the big flowers is so beautiful. Um, it didn't fit this page, but I have used it on a gardening page and it, it with black background with just like black cardstock and it came out so gorgeous. And that seems to work well for the letters. And I have that yellow already with those scallop pieces down there, so that'll coordinate nicely. Now I'm just taking my precision point adhesive and I am sticking the letters onto that yellow paper there. I'm just using my tweezers so that I can um, pick them up easily. Now I'm just seeing how to look at the top there. And I'm taking a picture of my layout with my iPad so that I can um, take everything off and start adhering it, but so that I don't forget how I had it, I refer to the photo. <laughs>
And as you can see, it would be easy to forget where everything goes. There's a lot of little pieces here. So I love taking a photo when I'm pretty much ready and then I start, I pull it all off and I start adhering it. And then I'm just making sure my green paper is nice and straight so I don't have to worry about everything else being crooked. If one, if the, the you know, if one paper's crooked, it's gonna throw everything else off. And it just drives me crazy. And I don't really, I don't think I'm OCD, but um, it just makes it harder later if you see, you know, if one thing's off and everything else is off, um, it just messes with my brain. It's easy to make it straight. You've got grids and lines and you've got, um, you can see, you know, start, start with straight. <laughs> And I'm using my Creative Memories Tape Runner. It's the best, I love it, it works. And if I need to reposition something, I can very carefully with my multi-purpose tool. Um, but for the most part, it's pretty permanent. I probably use a little bit more tape runner than I should. I don't know where that comes from. Um, I don't want it to fall off. A lot of people use a lot less than I do. There's some people who use more. I'm kind of in the middle, but leaning towards more, which I think it's because it's kind of fun to use. So I'm just running it over the page. All these papers are so pretty. I think I just noticed that these polka dots right here would be really cute too. I am so glad I was able to angle my camera so that I could use my scrap and easel while I show you my process because it's so much better on my back and my neck. I absolutely love my scrap and easel. I decided to put the paper, the yellow paper underneath first without adhering it just to get an idea of where everything was gonna go with the blue and the yellow there. So um, it just sort of helped me decide.
and I just kept the blue down except I didn't press down the tape runner sticky on the top part because I got to get that other strip of yellow underneath the top. See how bad it looks when something's crooked? It just drives you nuts. Well, it drives me nuts anyway. Just gonna pull this up a little bit, make it nice and straight. This strip of yellow gave me a, a hard time, but we'll get there. Attach the rest. I had so much fun doing this page. What's fun about scrapbooking is you had a fun event or a fun thing that you took photos of. Usually it's fun or celebratory of some sort. Um, and you get to relive those moments again. And besides reliving the moments and enjoying the moments, you're also enjoying crafting. And it's like therapy. It's like th three in one. You get You get to relive the fun moments. You get to be having fun crafting and then you get a little bit of therapy I think. Being creative is very therapeutic for me. And then you have a keepsake on top of all of that. It's so pleasing to the eye th that it's straight for me. I've been scrapbooking for over 20 years, probably about 25 years now. And I've tried all sorts of brands and supplies and things. And I will tell you, it's so easy to just buy Creative Memories collections. Every once in a while, I'll buy a few stickers and, you know, basic cardstock from other brands. But as far as paper stickers and embellishments go, it is so easy, everything coordinates. And then there's collections that coordinate with other collections, as you saw. And I'm just not good at putting different things together. I need someone else to do it for me. And then I pick which collection I wanna use. It is a million percent better, faster, and easier. And then the quality that Creative Memories has, the papers just feel nice, they look nice, they are nice. It's just, I'm telling, I mean, I did for a long time refuse to buy collections and I would go to Michael's and I would go to Hobby Lobby and I would look for, you know, what looked good. And it was a whole bunch of different things all together. And it was just silly nonsense. And it made scrapbooking so much harder. It was like work all of a sudden. Then I started buying collections and I never turned back. 
It's much more enjoyable and it's so easy. Here I have decided that I'm going to put some um, stickers and embellishments with my title. So I'm just kind of playing around with those little croquet balls and little hearts and um, flowers and things to see what I like best. Kind of sticking that little dandelion flower behind the croquet bracket um, or arch or whatever it's called or picket. I'm, I'm pretty sure it has an actual name um, and I want it sort of the leaf in the front and the flower in the back and I'm just kind of playing around with it. <laughs> My multi purpose tool of being silly. Cut that down. And I think it needs to be cut down a bit more. Page is starting to come together here. And I think I want a border along the bottom there. And I find that that polka dot paper works perfectly. I use the scallop blade for the 12 inch trimmer to um, cut that border on one end of a, with a scallop. And then I'm just deciding how I wanna crop the photos a little bit. And I'm using my Creative Memories personal trimmer to cut my photos or crop my photos. Now I'm putting my photos onto white paper, matting them. I just want a thin white border around them.
and I'm using white cardstock from Creative Memories. Something that's really cool that Creative Memories does is when you order photos, it prints the name of your project on the back of all the photos. So this was uh, August 2009 or 2000 August, whatever. But it also has the date the photo was taken, which is really helpful for scrapbooking. Really, really helpful. Whatever your computer or your phone is saving the date as, so make sure the dates are correct that you put in or whatever. Sometimes things get imported from other people's photos that I find and it's like 1959 and it was yesterday. So check on that, but um, it will print the date 
uh, as it understands it. So if you want to put the date on your page, you know, you know exactly when these photos were taken. And I love that. It's very helpful. Now I am going to cut this photo in half, which is so crazy, especially when you've already mounted it or matted it onto, you know, the background paper, but it's such a cool little effect. And again, I got this idea for um, scrapbook and cards today. And um, I just liked how it looked. So I wanted to try it out. It's scary at first to cut your photo in half. I also wanted to cut them um, differently from each other, being uh, that they're on top and on bottom, sort of, you know, next to each other. That way I wanted them to be different. I didn't want them to line up exactly. Now I'm just gonna add that little strip of a border to the bottom of our title. I'm actually using the precision point adhesive from Creative Memories because it's, an, it's a really thin little strip of border there. And I have that border hanging off a little bit, as you can see. I wanted it, um, I wanted it thick, but I wanted it lower. I don't want to say thick, but thicker. 
Um, and I can't remember if I cut it off or if I left that border intact. I was trying to think if I maybe I cut the bottom edge of it, maybe. No, I like how thick it is. Well, maybe I do cut it. Something happens here. I'm just cutting the edge of the title on the side. And then I have to cut my title in half, which will be scary. And now I am attaching the photos to the page. Ta-da! Yay. So much fun. I guess you can guess who won the game of croquet. Maybe. Maybe they're just celebrating a good move. <laughs> I'm really liking how this page is turning out. And for the first time, I'm working left to right. Usually I set up the left side and then I set up the right side, but I adhere the right side first. I don't know why, because we read left to right. We do things left to right. But lots of times my two page layouts, I will end up working right to left. Uh, but this time I didn't. It's kind of rare for me. And put a little adhesive on the back of that layered embellishment.
Now, these aren't the greatest photos in the world, but I captured the moment and I'm so happy to scrapbook it. Now I am putting my stickers down. Got my croquet mallets. So excited to finally use those. Sometimes if I have some stickers that I know there is no way in the foreseeable future that I can possibly use them, I will use them in a card or I will give them away um, or hopefully I get to scrapbook with them. But I thought I might be able to use these and I'm really glad I am able to. I'm trying to figure out if I want to sort of layer that white sticker underneath the mallet. And I think I liked how that looked because I didn't want to cover the mallet too much anyway. I've got that little arrow sticker on the photo that says so fun. And then croquet ball and a little ricket or bracket or arch or whatever those are called. I'm sure I'll remember as soon as I'm done with this video. Wicket? Maybe it's called a wicket. I don't know. Adding a few more stickers, a little heart up there in the left corner. Maybe a heart over here. Maybe some other stickers. can't pass up the opportunity of using the word love. Hearts and love go on lots of my pages. I can't help myself. They're probably two of my favorite things. I love hearts, as you can see in Punch Paper Love's logo, and I love the word love. And this little blissful is perfect. It's a nice green that goes really well with my grass. Somewhere, maybe. Well, that looks nice. Perfect. On my computer, I typed out a few little moments um, that captured the photos, like journaling, but I'm cutting them out into strips. And I just use the Courier font, I believe, either the Courier font or American typewriter. And then I printed it onto white cardstock. I think that's American typewriter. 
I tend to use American Typewriter quite a bit because it's not overwhelming and it's easy to read and it has a nice style to it. Now we have our journal strips. You can use a typewriter or a computer, as long as you have a printer. And I have to decide where to put these. I rarely measure anything, but I got lucky with that top journal box fitting just right in that space that it has in the photo there. I did not measure in advance. I just happened to get lucky. Sometimes I will measure, but it's rare. And lots of times I will do something twice because I want it to look a certain way and I didn't measure. And I cut that one in the middle on purpose. I thought it looked really cool.
a hoop. That's what they're called. They're called hoops. That green paper in the back with the grids reminds me of croquet hoops. There you go. Closure. <laughs> I've also heard them called wickets. I don't know if that's a British term, but I think wickets sounds pretty cool. Okay, now for me to do the title, I needed the pages touching each other, so I had a really good idea of where I was going to cut it. Maybe not perfect, but pretty darn close. So here's our title. And now we will cut it down the middle. Time to attach it. Looks like that yellow paper is from the Hello Autumn because the back of it is very obvious. Hello Autumn collection. It's got that orangey plaid, orange and yellow. And this guy's sticking up a little bit in the middle because there's no tape runner there because we attached it and then cut it down the middle. Same with this guy. Need a little bit of help. Multi-purpose tool to the rescue. Nice and straight. Well, there you have it. Our two page layout with six photos of a little fun time playing croquet. You can use this layout for just about anything. Thank you so much for watching and for subscribing. Have an awesome day.